Hello, thanks for joining this Embarcadero DBA and Developer Skill Sprint. In this skill sprint, we'll cover how to debug stored SQL code in DB Artisan and Rapid SQL. In this skill sprint, we'll be working specifically with DB Artisan, though the user interface is identical when working with Rapid SQL as well. Let's go ahead and get started. So, first we're presented with the welcome page for DB Artisan. In my work through today on this skill sprint, I'm going to be working with Oracle as well as Sybase. And I chose these two platforms specifically. At Oracle, just to give you a general feel of how we can work with the, uh, with the debugging interface. And Sybase to show you how we can integrate with the temporary tables. If you're using any temporary tables in your stored procedures, um, DB Artisan and Rapid SQL can integrate with that and be able to show you the values of that. And that's as a direct result of our uh, partnership with Sybase many years ago when we first developed this debugging API and assisted of Sybase with creation of their debugging API, we were able to get that exposed that we were able to then integrate and get you that information with regard to the temporary tables. And Sybase is the only platform that has that support. A couple other things to get started. Um, SQL Server, you're going to have to do some more steps. We have those steps documented, but it's going to require a little bit more permissions on the server itself. Um, SQL Server by nature is, is not as friendly to the debugging interface, so you can certainly get it done. It just takes a few more steps. Um, the permissions are needed are, are limited. Most developers and, and certainly DBAs have the permissions needed uh, to go ahead and get the debugging interface started. So without further ado, let's go ahead and, and get started. We're going to kick off working with my Oracle database. So let's expand into the schemas, and we'll go into the GIM schema. And we'll go to my procedures. So here we have some procedures that I've been working with. And we're going to take this first one. This is one that I demo with a lot, um, broker client breakdown. It goes through, and we're going to give it an input parameter, and then step through and show you the values that are presented. So at this point, we can right click, view the context menu, and select debug from here. We can also select debug from the main um, menu bar for this specific object. So we'll go ahead and select debug. So now DB Artisan is starting to build the UI. So we have that interface. And the first thing we're presented with is the input parameter. Now this is I the identical parameter window, the dialog that you'll see if you just did a right click and execute on the object. So here we can start entering the values. So this is a, a very simple example with only one input parameter, uh, no that we're able to save these input values. So if you do have that store procedure that has a lot, um, populate it and save it. And then whenever you need it again, if you're going to debug um, throughout the development process, we can open up that parameters file and we can bring those parameters in. So at this point, we're going to go ahead. I selected 21. We'll press continue. And now we're seeing the dialog open and we're getting some information with regards to the session being started. I'm going to go ahead and hide that get some more real estate here. So at this point, we're into the interface. So before I go up top and show you the features there, let's take a look at the bottom portion of the window. So here on the left-hand side, we see the variables that are defined in this stored procedure. So we can go through. Here's my input parameter. It already has a value, as expected. I put 21. And we can step down through, and we can see the different types. Now again, Values are null. We haven't stepped into that code yet. And then we have a watch window. Now, the watch window is pretty neat. And what we can do is we can drag values down and put it into the watch window. So in my example today, we're going to pull overall average price. And we're going to drop this down into the watch. So now we can watch this value. And there's some other interesting things we can do with the variables that we drop into the watch window. So over in this side, of the interface would be the dependencies in the call stack. So here is my call stack. So right now I'm just in the broker client breakdown store procedure. And as we step in, you'll see this change. And then we can look at the dependencies. So we have my broker client breakdown procedure. And then I have a nested procedure. So I actually call another procedure that runs my investment type lookup. All right, so we've, we've talked about the lower section up at the top. We have step into. As you'd expect, we're going to step step through the code. Here is our step over. 
So I mentioned the dependency window where I had that investment type lookup. When we get to that piece of the store procedure, I can choose to step over that. I don't have to step in. Maybe it's a part of a, another procedure that I know has been running fine for years, no need to step through it. If we do, by any chance, step into that accidentally, we can always step out. Here's run the cursor. We can put our cursor anywhere in our store procedure and ask the DB Artist and Rapid SQL to run to that specific spot in their code. Uh, we can set, remove, insert, and remove breakpoints, and we'll do that in, in just a moment. Here is the go. So if we get in here, we've debugged a little bit, and, and we found our, our issue, and we can just hit go, and it'll finish it. No need to step through it. If we're, we're confident, we can send it and go ahead and run. We can stop it at any time, and we can restart. Now, the stopwatch here, this is, we refer to this as the profiler, but I, I want to be very clear on this. This is our debugging profiler. And so what this is going to do is if I toggle this on, this will start putting uh, time stamps on, in the left-hand margin. And by time stamps, I'm referring to the, the round trip it takes to leave our debugging interface, go to the database, perform the action, and then come back. We're going to calculate the duration of that time and present it for you. Not not a a hundred percent realistic, but it does give you an idea of, of what statements could potentially uh, be be slow or be the bottleneck. But that's our profiler. And if I were to step through, you're going to start seeing some time metrics start being displayed here. I'm going to toggle that off so then we can we can continue to just work with the UI. So as we're seeing here, we're going to get our average into our overall average price. So as we step in, we brought that value in. If we scroll through here, we'll eventually see it there in my overall average price. We can go to the watch window and see it displayed in the watch window. We're also able to hover over the variable and be displayed with a pop-up giving you the value of the variable as well. So multiple ways to get the value. So let's go ahead and continue to step through. And we'll start seeing some of the values are being populated now. Now, when I scroll down, one of the areas that I'd like to stop would be right here, where I start my big, uh, my big calculations to determine how I want to process these records. So at this point, I could either go with the hand, the breakpoint, insert, or remove, or I can right-click and we'll toggle to the breakpoint. And now I have a breakpoint inserted here. If I want to edit the breakpoint, now I have a no condition. So every time I, I, I'm processing this store procedure in the debug mode, it's going to stop regardless of any value. If I want to set a conditional expression, I can do that here. Maybe when a certain variable equals a certain value, I want it to stop. That's certainly supported within the interface. And then skip count. I can skip this breakpoint X number of times and only stop after the, every five or every 10. However, your store procedure needs you to, to control that. I'm going to keep this at no condition. We'll press OK. Again, really quick, we can see how we can disable or enable all of them if needed. So if I step back in, now we're going to see some of my values are going to be defined. All right, again. I'm into my client transaction. Now I'm building this cursor. I'm back down now. I'm fetching into that. And now here is my call into my other store procedure, my investment type lookup. So stepping into that, now you'll notice that the call stack has changed. Now I'm into my investment type. Look at the dependencies. The same stack still appears. So again, at this point, I can step through this. Now I'm going to pop back out. Now I'm right where I expected. I'm at my breakpoint. So I'm going to step through here a few times to get, get the values. Now back rotating through again. If I were to say go here, right, it takes me right up and stops me at this breakpoint. So again, now I'm able to hover over. My price in is 15. My overall average price is 51. Right now, I mentioned about the watch window. What we can do with a watch window, and, it, and it's only in the watch window, so we have to pull that variable over, 
But in this place, in, in, this, in the value field, in the watch window, we can change the value on the fly. So as I mentioned, we had a, a I think it's a, what was it, $15 or so? Uh, $15.08 for the price in. And we know that's going to be less than the overall average price that I had. But what if I wanted to see how it would react if it was greater than? Maybe I've already confirmed my, confirmed my logic if it was a $50 value, but I'm going to change it to 5 So now the overall, the price in is 15 the overall average price is 5 So now let's see how my processing works with this. So again, we're able to follow through here and see exactly what's happening with my values. So at this point, right, I can continue to loop through and see how it's doing. I could toggle this breakpoint off at any time. Oh, I added, sorry, added another one. Let me go ahead and edit the breakpoints. I'm going to disable both of these. Let me select them. Disable all. OK. So now we're good to go. So again, I could step through if I'd like. I could put my cursor here, as I mentioned, and then run the cursor if I'd like. Takes me right to this line. And again, I'm going to go ahead and send this to completion. And now we're finished. The debugging session is terminated. And we're able to see our results. So the, the, the complete circle of events here, we're starting the debugging session. We open up the, the editor. We put in the input parameters. And then we step on through. And lastly, we're able to see the results. So again, the easy way to start and work with a debugging interface in DB Artist and Rapid. Now, I want to take a step out and show how that extra features with Sybase. So for those folks that are working with Sybase, let me go ahead and connect. I'm connected to my as 15, my Sybase 15. I'm gonna, I've set a bookmark already for this, so let's go to Bookmarks, Sybase, and here's my procedures for the skill sprint. Takes me right there. I'm going to open up. It's in the same database. It's my same store procedure just converted over uh, for Sybase, but let's go ahead and de debug this. Now in this store procedure, whereas before in, in the Oracle side, I was writing to a, t a table in in, SQL Sur in Sybase, I'm actually writing to a temporary table. So we're getting the, the interface started here. Now, I just did this a few minutes ago with 100% with success, and I was able to show. Here we go. All right. We'll put that same input values in. Press Continue. So now we're building the interface. We've acquired the dependencies. I'm going to go ahead and let this finish, and then I'll close this dialog. So here again, different platform, same UI. Here's all of our variables. Here is my call stack and my dependency. Now here I have another procedure called broker select. But what I wanted to show here is the value of the, the tab here for temp tables. And we'll see we don't have any temp tables yet. But as I step through, you'll see I've declared a cursor selecting that overall average price here. I'm creating that temp table called temp client. So at this point, if I were to hop back over to the temp tables tab, I could drop this down, and I'll see the list. And if I'd like to see those values, here we can just see that it's defined. No values have been added there. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go ahead and stop this right here. Let's toggle a breakpoint. And we will run it. We've stopped at the breakpoint. So again, also, you're able to see the results tab. So again, I, I have my first result returned, which is my broker number my office location, and some other details. So let's step through this. There, my price. Now I'm inserting into that temp table. I've finished the insert. I'm getting my next transaction. Now if I were to go into my temp table, I've selected the temp client. Now here, this green arrow is an execute. It's going to return a query. So here are my results of that temporary table. If we look here at the advanced query, so if you're building a very large temporary table and you want to filter down even more to understand how many, uh, how many did I put in that had a price less than $30, I can write that query in this advanced temporary table query field. The dialog here will allow me to specify a, a specific query versus just a generic select star from. 
So again, as I step through, as you would expect, we're building more values, adding more values into the temporary table. So at any time, we can go back, pick the temp tables, run the query, and there's more information back. So again, I'm going to go ahead and finish that to completion. Oh, let me toggle this breakpoint off. There we go. We'll run it to completion, and again, there is my result set. So at this point, we have my results. Now let's let's look here really quick at our options menu. I'm going to close. I probably should have started with the options, but you know, just wanted to look here quickly. Here's our debug interface. So here we can see, by in general, the dependency tree options. You can prefetch all dependencies. No no dependencies are only up to a certain level. You have control there. And DB2, here we set allow you to specify the timeout, and then with debug option. So again, DB2 supports the compile with debug option. We allow you to either default or prompt you all, all times. Here's Oracle, again, supporting the debug option. And here's some other parameters you have. And then lastly, there's the profiler that I mentioned, the little clock display. Here's where we can specify the time units. All right, so again, really quick, just a really quick overview. You're going to drill in to your database, find your stored procedure, or, or it potentially could be a package or a package body, and we can de debug those for Oracle specifically. And once we find those, all we have to do is select, and then from the context menu, select debug, or go up to the top and select debug from the main menu for that property, for that object. So again, um, a real a high-level overview of the debugging interface and how to debug stored SQL code in DB Artisan and RapidSQL.